Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. This is an amazing time to be in cryptocurrency. Seriously, this is an amazing time to be in cryptocurrency. In today's video, we're going over some of the top projects in the space today. Just like always, guys, if there are other projects that you want us to cover going forward, comment these projects below. If enough people comment, we'll throw them in a future video. But in today's video, I'm going to share with you news opinion analysis that you won't find anywhere else. I'm not just going to tell you the coins. I'm going to tell you why I'm bullish or why people are bullish or what the on-chain metrics say. This is why you subscribe to the channel, because we drop one video every day, keeping you informed. If you're interested in making money in cryptocurrency, jump on the altcoin daily team and let's start with the two bluest chips in the space, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum have been ranging for months and months and months. And I know people are getting bored with the ranging of Bitcoin and Ethereum. But don't tune out, tune in, because both of these are ready to pop. On-chain metrics turn bullish for Bitcoin and Ether. Bitcoin and Ether are flashing multiple buy signals from an on-chain perspective. So the key takeaways are this. Bitcoin has seen a significant increase in idle tokens exchanging hands, which may lead to high volatility. While the ETH supply on exchanges has plummeted, while well, prices sit in the opportunity zone. In fact, both of these are going through supply shocks. Bitcoin and ETH could soon resume their uptrends if these on-chain metrics remain intact. So I know it's pretty obvious at this point, but Bitcoin and ETH are ready to pop. And once they get above a certain price threshold, it is unlikely they go below that threshold going forward. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you just as bullish as I am? Are you just as bullish as Raul Paul is? Just because perspective is useful for everybody, this is ETH in 2021 versus Bitcoin in 2017. ETH 2021 in blue versus Bitcoin 2017 in white. TLDR, Ethereum's network is gaining similar adoption to that of Bitcoin last cycle. Ethereum is one cycle behind and Ethereum is looking ready to pop. So Ethereum looks bullish. Bitcoin looks bullish. Now here is Bitcoin 2021 versus Bitcoin 2013. Everybody says the cycles are similar. Well, it's looking more and more like the cycles are similar. So this is Bitcoin 2021 in white and Bitcoin 2013 in blue. Get ready, guys. I'm just telling you, get ready, get ready. Now let's move forward to some of the top projects in the altcoin space today doing big things. This is just in. Well, of course, if you would have been subscribed to us or following us rather on Twitter, you would have found out about this yesterday. So make sure that you follow us on Twitter. Link in the description. Cardano to integrate Chainlink oracles for real time data. Chainlink is a blue chip in its space. Cardano is quickly becoming a blue chip in the Ethereum interoperator and competitor space. The point is, this partnership is pretty huge. And to hear, what Charles Hoskinson and Sergey Nazarov, the leader of Cardano, the leader of Chainlink, to have what they say about this partnership, it's a pretty big deal. Now, for those of you who are unaware what Chainlink can do for Cardano, this is how IOHK described the value prop. Chainlink provides Oracle services to power hybrid smart contracts on any blockchain. Now that Cardano has smart contracts, this is a match made in heaven. Chainlink Oracle Networks enable smart contracts to reliably connect to any external API, leveraging secure off-chain computations for feature-rich applications. Chainlink currently secures tens of billions of dollars across DeFi, insurance, gaming, and other major industries, offering global enterprise and leading data providers a universal gateway to all blockchains. And then he went on to say, the Chainlink will be the preferred Oracle solution for Cardano, which means that developers using the blockchain will be able to feed Chainlink's institutional grade data into their smart contracts. Pretty big deal, my friends, pretty big deal. I'll just read to you what Charles has to say about this from Cardano. I'll read to you what Sergey has to say about this from Chainlink. So Charles, oracles are essential to make real world data accessible on Cardano. 
and they support advanced smart contracts such as DeFi applications. IOHK is committed to providing developers with the most secure and robust tooling for building useful solutions on Cardano, making it an easy choice to integrate Chainlink's market-leading Oracle solution. Not only will integrating Chainlink's price feeds reduce the go-to-market time for Cardano developers, but it will establish a secure foundation for Cardano's DeFi ecosystem, helping make Cardano more trusted by users around the world. I like this. I like this a lot. And now co-founder Sergey Nazarov of Chainlink, he has this to say. We're excited to leverage our extensive experience and expertise by establishing native support for Chainlink on the Cardano blockchain and supporting its next stage of growth into markets like DeFi and beyond. Similar to programming interfaces in web app development, developers building DeFi applications on Cardano will be able to plug and play Chainlink price feeds into their smart contracts to quickly gain access to high quality, real-time price data on a wide range of assets while still maintaining robust security and uptime. Ultimately, this will empower developers on Cardano to build next generation applications quicker and more securely. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. Give me your thoughts on this in the comments below. Next coin on our list is Solana. Solana adoption. So we're talking about adoption here, the adoption of Solana. The speed is ridiculous. The rate of adoption for Solana is ridiculous. It is likely the Ethereum of this cycle, according to macro guru Raul Paul. So he thinks Ethereum is doing what Bitcoin did last cycle, and he thinks Solana is doing what Ethereum did last cycle. So that's a pretty big deal. Macro guru Raul Paul says smart contract platform Solana is poised to be one of the best performers this cycle as he believes it is following in the footsteps of Ethereum's 2017 bull cycle. Quote, I've been looking at it and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And then I think it's the ETH of this cycle. Remember ETH was the one that became the new big thing? I think it's this because of the pedigree of all the people involved in it and the speed of adoption is ridiculous. I mean, it's growing faster than ETH did last cycle from a Metcalf's law perspective. The number of applications the ecosystem is, it's like, it's like somebody just sent me a chart of the ecosystem. There's like 300 people already working with Solana. It's like, okay, this is real and this is happening at the speed none of us can get our heads around. And Raul Paul's always been fairly bullish on Cardano. He thinks this is kind of better than Cardano. He adds that he sees Solana outperforming Cardano and Route to become one of the top cryptocurrencies. It's kind of like everybody wanted Cardano to happen. It's actually happening to Solana right now doesn't mean Cardano doesn't over time, but Solana looks like it's going to win this cycle. It wasn't the standout coin that becomes a major. So people are starting to notice Solana and Solana's ecosystem quite literally is undeniable. Apparently Raul Paul saw something like this and he got incredibly bullish on Solana. Well, has he seen this for Elrond? It seems that people talk too much about other blockchains. They forget about Elrond network with a huge ecosystem itself from DeFi to infrastructure exchanges, wallets, transparency, fiat on ramps, validators, building. I mean, you can see for yourself, this is kind of like the dark horse in the Ethereum interoperators and competitors ecosystem. I happen to be bullish. Now, the next coin on our list is XRP. I need to share with you two articles related to XRP, understand the information and understand why it's making our list today. First of all, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says that he is open to settling the landmark XRP case with the SEC. So he says he's open to settling. Ripple's chief executive, Brad Garlinghouse, says that the San Francisco-based payments firm is open to settling its lawsuit with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission under one condition. This was in a new interview with Fox Business. Garlinghouse says that Ripple would be willing to settle with the SEC if regulators clearly define the regulatory status of XRP. So at first he says, we're not settling. Now he says, I'll settle on one condition. This is the quote. To the extent that we can find a constructive path forward with the SEC, we of course 
want to find that. There's no scenario, though, that we're going to settle unless there's absolute certainty about what XRP is on a go forward basis. If the SEC can give us that, then we will settle with them and clear this all up. And it's very clear that how Ripple is using these technologies, how many scores of other people in the community are using these technologies, they're not securities, they do not represent an ownership in Ripple, the company, this is according to Brad Garlinghouse. So it's seeming more and more likely each day that there will be some sort of settlement, there will be some sort of slap on the wrist, and that comes with this next part, XRP has the greatest risk to reward ratio with 10x price rise likely. Again, this is according to macro guru Raul Paul. I liked what he had to say. XRP is a great risk reward. The lawsuit, we've seen every lawsuit. So we're talking about all the SEC lawsuits, which just ended on a slap on the wrist. Every single one has been fine. Everybody's actually cleared up after the event anyway. And these events were a while ago. BitMEX, that's happening. We're going to see all of these. So I think it's going to be a slap on the wrist that it could likely be a security. There's There'll be no admission of guilt on either side. There'll just be a payment or a fine, and then XRP is free to run. And then he continues. He talks about why he feels the price is ready to run, the factors that'll drive the price of the coin up. He says, what's interesting about XRP is there's quite a lot of use cases. Now, I know a bunch of the Bitcoin people hate it. It's not decentralized enough. I don't care. People are using it. Yes, a lot more than most people realize. And what's amazing about this setup is that you can't buy on any of these exchanges and it's not in the Bitwise ETF. So the Bitwise ETF is now a billion of the Bitwise index. The top 10 index is a billion dollars. So the moment XRP is free, they will have to buy a few hundred million dollars in it as everybody else can because the exchange will have it back. So they're setting up for a hell of a price run if this thing clears up. Yes, if it's cleared up with the SEC, exchanges can relist them, presumably, and they will have to have some sort of supply of the token. Now, the XRP case doesn't have to end with a slap on the wrist. Worst case, it doesn't. Worst case is, let's say, 50% downside. Best case is 10x from here. So I'll take a 50 to 1 risk reward for the next three to six months on XRP. XRP makes our list for those reasons. Let's talk about another very interesting project in the space today, MENA Protocol. It's the world's lightest blockchain powered by participants. We've talked about this on the channel before. Very interesting data about MENA. It is ranked 21st for having the most money value staking. Actually, 97.5% of eligible tokens are being staked, making it rank 8th with the most eligible tokens on staking. So a lot of participation in the MENA ecosystem for staking, a lot of value is being staked. It's the newest coin to have that amount of staking. Number one, most value staked is ADA and the number two is SOL. They made the list. Now MENA makes the list. And with that being said, that is our list today. That is the news information perspective. I hope you gained value in this video. Let me know about which coins that you like in the comments below, and I'll try and fit them into coming videos. And with that being said, subscribe to the channel. This market is moving fast. This is the time to be in crypto. See you tomorrow.